All right, guys, we are live. Thank you so much for taking out some time. Um, let me jump right into this. And my first question is, what both drew you to this role in the film, The Portrait? You know, how'd you come on board? You start, Ryan. Yeah, you've done enough at the starting. Uh, look, <laughs> this is a... Again, man, in, in in an age of remakes, rehashes, sequels, prequels, this is, you know, a, a rarity to truly get a uh, an original story that has something to stay and that stays with you long after it said it. Um, it was also an opportunity to play a character that very few actors ever do. Um, that's, a, you know, a character that for the most part, for 98 percent of the movie doesn't talk. Um, um, and. You know, I'm a huge fan of, of the genre, the the psych horror, psych thriller genre um, that I think sort of hit its sort of peak in the sort of 60s, 70s, you know, may, maybe even the, the 80s with the, like the, the basic instinct kind of style. Um, it was something that I was, that I'm always kind of drawn to. There's a, um, a weird kind of, pathology that I think exists in all of us where you know we want we all wonder like what would I be like if I was in that particular circumstance would I go to those depths um yeah and then you know just an opportunity to work with um great fucking people like sure. this, yeah. this movie you know really attracted the best of the best from the industry and all of us doing it you know on a shoestring budget but doing the absolute best we can to make it look like it was anything but that's cool man i love it definitely and how about you natalia um same as rye many of the points he said you know um I love independent filmmaking. I think that's where our art really is born, where we all are born in a lot of ways. My first film ever was an indie film and that's what really made me fall in love with this craft because I was in theater and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do films and it was independent cinema that, that, that sort of showed me that, you know, it wasn't all about the glitz and gra glamour that it was actually about the craft and whatnot. So yeah. it excited me enormously to get offered not just to be part of an independent film with such artists. And I had a conversation with Simon and I immediately intellectually really bonded with him. I, he's just a very, very smart human being. He knows his craft. He knows what he wants. So I felt very confident. And then, uh, the subject uh, was really linked to what 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 I was going on, what was going on in my life in terms of of going through grief. And uh, as Ryan said, the the thriller, uh, psychological thriller aspect, um, I think grief has a very suspenseful ens essence to it. Right. So I just thought, oh, this is so magical because we can not just play the theme, the the tone for for the character, just for the character. What what the grief the character is going through is very much um, in essence smells tastes and feels like suspense feels um like like thrill feels you know grief has this really bizarre feeling where you're almost detached from everything else you're in this floaty state you kind of don't recognize yourself or anyone else you sort of doubt your thoughts you it's part of depression. It's part of of, of dealing with darkness, and mm -hmm. and I think that's when I read this uh, the this script. I I was terrified of doing it because I have never carried a film by my not by myself, but where you're in everything uh, in every almost shot where you really have to string along in your moments to to uh, hold the film within itself, and um, so it terrified me. But it, there was also a part that I think that's the masochist in some of us artists or in the classical ballerina in me. I, I love, I like pain. <laughs> um, I realized that about myself um, and, and I wanted to go through it. I wanted to experience it. I, I, I wanted to, um, to feel all these things that I could read on the page. I, I was drawn to the hardship of it. And, um, and so, yeah, that was a lot of it. And then of course, you know, meeting David and knowing his trajectory as a writer and producer in Hollywood um, and him being such a lovely human being. I just thought this is really feeling like something that I should do. 
And and the last thing is just gratitude, you know, it's so rare as an artist and then add as a woman and then add as a Latina to get this kind of opportunity. So it was a no brainer. Ah, that's amazing. I love it. Um, and, uh, and Ryan, like you mentioned, your character doesn't really speak much in the film. Um, you know, but I got to ask, how did you get into that deep character of Alex? I mean, he is, uh, um, an angry, <laughs> an angry person at some points. Um, how did you just dive into that character? Yeah, just sort of echoing on what Natalia just said, we, we both, I guess, are sort of masochistic at heart. So there is a level of like the deeper you go, the deeper you get type of mentality that we both love to bring to our work. Um, but this was sort of different in the fact that, you know, you can't just sort of uh, hope on a wing and a prayer that you know how to play a character with a traumatic brain injury. There's a copious amounts of research that went in and uh, various kind of PhDs that I sort of listened to, you know, whether it was um, lectures of theirs or books that they'd written. Um, and just understanding that coping with this type of an injury is one of the toughest things that any person could ever be asked to do because they're really coping with an alteration in such basic components of who they are as a person that it creates a challenge to their identity as a human being and their sense of meaning, uh, value. And the insidiousness of a head injury is that it can be quite difficult, sometimes impossible for someone else to recognize, whether it's a stranger on the street, but particularly in our, our story, you know, his own wife that's supposed to know him better than anyone. Sure. And, you know, she's supposed to be, well, theoretically is the outlet for this. Um, for him and when she feels like she's failing at it um, that's really the crux of the story how far do you take hope do you take love how far can it go before it's you know you're standing in the way of something that's far more drastic that's wild man and and like you guys mentioned um, you know uh, guilt and anger you know are definitely two major themes in the film you know was it kind of difficult for each of you to come out of character after shooting each day? I couldn't imagine it would be easy. That's uh, a great question. Yeah, uh, I think it depends on the character and the process. Uh, we didn't have much time in it, but I, I'll speak for myself, for um, to prepare sort of a character, at least for me, uh, methodical, you know, um, to the extent of... Uh, I'm so different from her in, in, in a lot of ways. I was going through that grief. I had lost people I love. So I was already in that sort of really low point. Um, it was it, it was an exorcism for me though. I really got to work out that pain. And, and uh, so for me, it was feeling more of a relief when I would get home. I, I, I felt like I didn't have more tears to cry or more, more pain to feel for my reality because I, I had sort of used it, which is so wonderful when you get to sort of correlate your 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 personal and, and professional endeavors at the same time. It's happened to me a couple of times in my career, very bizarrely. Um, uh, and, and it happened again with this. So, um, no, I, I, I don't, I have a, a very wonderful partner and husband who's also an artist so he gets it and he knows that if you come home and you're more quiet or introspective it's quite normal um but um but yeah I, I i don't feel like it was difficult for me to get in or out not because i'm good or anything just because i was really enjoying it so sure, it sure. posed difficulty if it it's like you know being a classical dancer and dancing on broken toes i did it and yes, it's painful and difficult, but I like more the other side. So the pain and the difficulty almost gets unacknowledged. Sure. You know, yeah, just that makes of, sense. Part of it, yeah. And how about you, Ryan? Yeah, uh, pretty pretty similar. I kind of like delving in that pain and, and sort of staying there. Um, it was a particularly short short um, shoot, so we, we could we could do that pretty much 100%. You know, if this was a series, it'd be a, a bit of a different story where you'd have to learn to kind of pace those emotions out because it is taxing. You know, I'm a very physical actor anyway. And in something like this, you, you there was a lot of sort of a physicality, the performance, but you do, you take that, you take that home to your loved ones. And um, 
there's a I don't know. There's a, there's a, a it's part therapy. I've never needed a therapist. You know, I, I probably should have had it at, at points in my life, but I've always felt like um, my you know art and the business itself, not the business, but the creation of art, being surrounded by all these wonderfully creative people, was a way to and and to all sort of banding together to tell this story. Uh, it's just there's nothing like it, Mike. Like you could be, it could be three o'clock in the morning in some podunk town in the middle of nowhere, and we're out there trying to make art while the rest of the world's sleeping. Like that's what it's all about. And that's cool. you know, particularly something that has, we got something to say here. I know we do. So um, it was incredibly contagious. Yeah, Brian and I need to do a film where we're like soldiers or something. We would we they we we swam in a frozen pool for like an hour and they kept saying to us, Do you want to get out? And we were like, No, we want to keep doing it. Such <laughs> masochist. I mean, I felt And that such... never made that never made the movie, by the way. And it never made the movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> we almost froze, but it was so wonderful. Like almost like 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 a kin such a kindred spirit to find someone. I've met so many actors that are like, I will not do another take. I almost froze. Oh my God, you know? <laughs> and this one was like just there <laughs> while I'm like outside shaking. And I just found it so wonderful because it's so rare that you find that desire for, for just, you know, pushing yourself to the furthest that you can to really proving how much you can take. Sure. And I, so, you know, the movie was pretty creepy and I gotta admit, I mean, I was curious did anything creepy happen on set during filming? You know, yes. really, that's well, cool. Well, not so much creepy, but something pretty interesting happened. And it's the only two things that I took from set <laughs> <laughs> uh, were when, when we, the, 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 the film was shot in disorder completely. Uh, everything that shot was shot exterior in the exterior was in that villa that looks like an Italian villa. The inside house was shot in a very old school kind of, you know, uh, downtown, I think it was, or like Culver City around that area, large one. I don't know. I don't remember very well, but it was a completely different house. So uh, it, it, everything was 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 shot in, a, in disorder. And by the time we got to the older house to shoot the inside of the film, all the inside, the attic parts, uh, Ryan and I went upstairs to the attic by ourselves with each other, but just alone without the crew, everything to sort of feel out the space and the portrait was there and the attic had a very, you know, sort of uh, dark energy. And there was these huge, just stunning, short little bookcases full of books. And we each pulled out a book. And the first book I pulled out, I didn't even know uh, what, what this book was I've never read it and it's an old book so it's leather bound it doesn't say the name and when I pulled it out um the title of the book was prima donna but when you open it I kid you not and everyone in the film knows this it said Cordova after the accident Gosh. Cordova after the accident had gone mad and it was a random book uh, yeah I mean I, I have it upstairs and then Rai chose another book. And I think the first or one of the first books he pulled out was his favorite author, which is Rolf uh, Emerson, right? Yep. Yep. And I, I was like, oh, my God, there. So something is, you know, I, I, I'm not an, in, in like esoteric person that much, but um but yeah, I, I, I was floored. I ran downstairs and showed it to Simon and David and I was like, what is this? <laughs> And, yeah, someone was 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 calling us for sure. That's really neat. Yeah, and because... on the on the greater level too, Mike. Like this film obviously delves into sort of uh, life and death, but you know the this film was the actual film was lost at one point. Oh, and, and this is on the on the last day of shooting where you all get the the word the heartbreaking word that um, look it's a longer story, but that the 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 film was lost. So all our hard work, all the crew's hard work was like gone. But through, again, sort of fate, circumstance, we were able to kind of rescue the movie. And um, wow. and it sort of 
you know, it, it is what it is now. But yeah, there's a there's a longer, crazier story as to how and why it was lost, but um, it's back. <laughs> the day we rapped, as they yelled rap, we found out it was all gone. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, it was. I called Brian, my husband. Remember, and I remember just for hours laughing because I couldn't. It was kind of like when you go into shock. I was like, "This is this. This Can't is not." Be. Yeah, now nah, we're gonna. They're gonna find it in a trunk tomorrow. Like someone took it from set. I I have even videos with the crew at a bar, and we're all laughing. We're not sad yet. We're not shocked. We're not. We're all like, "What is this? This is crazy." They left it someplace. Oh my god, these guys! And I have the video of all of us talking because I just put the cell phone to kind of record the moment. <laughs> that was a very weird situation. Yeah. Extremely. Well, I'm glad weird. it was found because I uh, I enjoyed it, and I think other people are going to enjoy it as well. So. Oh, thank you. I uh, appreciate you, Mike. Absolutely. So listen, I don't want to keep you guys too long. So I want to say thanks again for taking out some time. And Ryan, hopefully we can chat again. That's not 11 years. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Listen, you have a great one, all right? And good luck with yes. the movie. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Absolutely. Cheers, Mike. Take care.